This is the data entry portion of Module 3 of IDIS Online Training for CDBG grantees. In this video, we will walk through the process of reporting accomplishments for a housing activity. The best way to learn IDIS is to get hands-on practice. I want to encourage you to log on to the UAT version of IDIS and enter the data yourself as you watch the video. You can pause the video at any time by clicking the pause button in the lower left hand corner. You can switch back and forth between this video and IDIS by holding down the Alt key on your keyboard and then pressing the Tab key. If you're not already logged into the UAT version of IDIS, pause the video at this time and do so now. You'll know if you are in the UAT version if you see UAT at the top of the screen. There are directions on accessing the UAT version of IDIS at the bottom of the login page and in Module 1 of this course. This video is Part 2 of the Housing Module. If you want to do the data entry for this tutorial, you need to first complete the housing activity setup exercise. I'll be using the data found in Case Study 2 of the course material. You can use this data as well or simply make it up as you go along. In the previous video, we set up the housing activity for an emergency repair job at 456 South Cedar Avenue. We then funded the activity and created a drawdown. It's time to go in and report accomplishments for this activity and update its status to complete. As always, we start at the home page of IDIS. If you want to follow along in the manual, we are in Chapter 7 for the first few screens and then we will skip to Chapter 11 for the housing specific screens. Right now, we are on page 7-1 of the manual. Okay, to report accomplishments for our activity, we need to go to the Projects Activities module in the Navigation menu. The system by default shows the Search Activities screen. This is used to find existing activities in the system. If you know the IDIS activity number, that's the fastest way to find the activity. If you don't know it, you can use any combination of the other search fields or simply click Search to get a list of all of your activities. Once the results come back, you will see your options on the right in the Action column. We should see Edit and View. The View function will let you look at the data but won't let you change anything. We want to be able to input accomplishment data, so we will choose Edit. This is the same page we saw when we added the activity. We have two fields we need to update here, the activity status and the completion date. However, the system won't let us update these until we provide the accomplishment data, so let's do that first. If you are following along in your manual, we are now in Chapter 11. If you look at the first page in Chapter 11, you will see the screens you have to complete based on the type of activity. For owner-occupied rehab, we will be completing two screens of data. Guidance for the first screen starts on page 11-3. The first thing we have to do on this page is specify the program year in which the benefits were realized. This is an important point to keep in mind when reporting accomplishments for CDBG. It doesn't matter what grant year the activity is funded out of, and it doesn't matter what action plan the activity is listed in. If the house was rehabbed in 2010, we will use 2010 in this field. When we do so, the rest of the data we enter on this page and the next will be counted as 2010 accomplishments. The next field is the Accomplishment Narrative field. HUD does not have specific guidance for this field. The best source of guidance for the narrative is your local CPD representative. In general, you can use the narrative to tell the story behind the numbers that are provided in the other fields. In some cases, the work may be nearly complete, but you cannot report any beneficiaries yet. For example, you may have used CDBG to rehabilitate a rental property, but the units are still vacant. You could use the narrative to explain the status of the activity and its expected completion date. You can also use the narrative to provide details on stalled and canceled activities. If the activity is still stalled and has not spent any money in the program year, you may want to use the narrative to explain why. The next field lists the accomplishment type, in this case, housing units, and the proposed number of units for the program year we selected. The system will provide this number once we save the screen. The next section will collect direct benefit data for the beneficiaries of the activity, including race, ethnicity, head of household, and income. We are now on page 11-5 of the manual. You can see that the system prompts us to count households as opposed to people for this activity. Our case study states that the beneficiary was white Hispanic. To report this, we select white from the dropdown and type 1 in the total owner column and 1 in the Hispanic column. If there was another beneficiary of a different race, 
we would click on the Add Another Race button and the system would give us a second row to input additional data. At the bottom of the race table is a row to report the number of female-headed households assisted. In the case study, the household is not female-headed, so we can leave this blank. The next section collects income data. Our case study tells us the beneficiary was low income, so we type a 1 in this field. Let's click Save and Continue. When we try to save the data, the system will check the race and income totals to see if they match. If they don't, the system will return an error and prompt you to correct the data. If all is good, the system will move us to page 2. If you are following along in your manual, we are in Chapter 11 on page 11-9. The second page collects performance measure data. Performance measures provide more detail about who the beneficiaries are and what type of work was done. These will change based on the type of activity you undertake. For owner-occupied rehab, there are five performance measures. The first asks, of the total units assisted, how many are occupied by elderly households? HUD defines elderly as 62 and older. Next, the system asks how many of the units were moved from substandard condition to standard condition. In other words, how many units had code violations that have been resolved through the rehab. When reporting Section 504 units, keep in mind that the threshold for reporting owner-occupied rehab is different for rental rehab. For owner-occupied rehab, HUD wants you to report any unit where the unit is made more accessible through the removal of architectural barriers. For rental rehabs, HUD only wants you to report the unit if it meets the Uniform Federal Accessibility Standards, which is a much higher standard. The next field is units that qualify as Energy Star. HUD only wants you to report the units that are certified, which means the unit has been inspected and certified by an energy auditor. There is a handout on the course website that provides additional guidance on reporting Energy Star units. There is also additional information on page 11-9. The final field asks you to report units brought into compliance with lead safety rules. You will follow lead safety rules for all of the units you rehab. What HUD really wants you to report here is the number of units that had lead and as a result of the rehab were made lead safe. This means you won't report any units that were free of lead paint to begin with or units where the rehab did not address all of the surfaces that could pose a lead hazard. Going back to our case study, it appears that none of the fields apply, in which case we can leave them blank. While they may not apply in this particular situation, you need to make sure that your data collection forms and process is able to capture them when they do apply. Now that we are finished, we will click on the Save button. This takes us back to the first page where we can finish updating the activity. If the activity is complete, meaning that you do not need to draw any more funds and there are no additional accomplishments to be reported, you can update the activity status to complete. Before we change the status to complete, the system wants us to check that all the required fields have been completed. To do this, we will click on the Check CDBG button. You may need to scroll over to the right to see it. The system will refresh the page and give you a message at the top. If there are no errors, the system will display CDBG Activity Pathway is complete. Otherwise, the system will list any problems that need to be corrected before completing the activity. The final step is to change the activity status field to complete. Put in a completion date and click the Save button. We'll see some errors here if the draw is still being processed or if the completion date is the same as the funding date. These are issues that occur during training because we are doing everything in the same day. Chances are you won't see these errors when entering your data throughout the program year.